In this clip we'll talk about the interpretation of regression parameters and eventually why rather than a simple regression we want to use multiple regression. So let's start out with a simple regression model. Our dependent variable shall be the average score of pupils in a school and we shall explain this with a constant and the expenditure per pupil in that school. And we have an error term UI. Now we have to be quite clear what's in that error term UI. There's certainly a component of randomness. So each school will have you know, some random factors that determines the average score. But there will also be some unobserved factors that are clearly important for the average score. That could be, for instance, and I shall only list two, the teacher quality, better teachers should result in higher scores, perhaps also the average family income of the children in that school. So let's think about the interpretation of beta 1. Beta 1 would be interpreted as the expected impact an additional dollar of funding per child would have on the school's average score. But really there are two caveats to this interpretation and we have to be very acutely aware of those. The first is that in our mind we have to be holding everything that is in the error term u constant. Okay, so it's a change of expenditure, but nothing else changes. Here, for instance, teacher quality and average family income. And the second caveat is that we have to assume that the error term and therefore the unobserved factors which are captured by the error term, that is the teacher quality and the average family income, for instance, in our case, is uncorrelated with our explanatory variable expenditure. So the second part of the assumption, that's really just our uh, simple linear regression assumption for. Now we have to be careful because it is quite likely that this assumption is breached. That's what this uh, lightning bolt indicates here. In particular, we can imagine that the average family income may well be correlated with expenditure. It is not so obvious whether this correlation should be negative or, or positive, and it may well depend on the institutional circumstances. So in the UK, for instance, it is quite likely to be a negative correlation as the government funds schools that have more children from disadvantaged backgrounds with extra money. This money is sometimes called the pupil premium. The question for the applied econometrician then arises of what we should do in this case where we have something in the error term that's likely to be correlated with the explanatory variable. Well, if you can, if you have observation for that variable here, average family income, you should really include it into your regression model. So the regression model would then look like before, but then as an additional explanatory variable, the average family income. We have a new error term, VI, because that is not the same anymore as the UI from the uh, simple regression model. We will now have to assume, that's now our multiple linear regression assumption for the zero conditional mean assumption, that this new error term VI is uncorrelated to expenditure and average income, or the expected value conditional on any value of these two variables is zero. So how do we interpret beta 1 in this new, now expanded, multiple regression model? The interpretation is, almost as before, the ex it represents the expected impact of an extra pound of expenditure on the average score of children in a school. But we will again have to qualify that, firstly, by saying that we have to hold average income, the other variable, and everything in the error term vi constant that is as before we call that the ceteris paribus condition or sometimes we also call this the partial effect and and that is the second condition as before that all that we have to assume that all our explanatory variables that's expenditure and average income are 
uncorrelated with the error term v and therefore the unobserved factors. So the setter is paribus condition is important and this now includes holding another explanatory variable constant that was the average income here and all the unobserved factors in the error term. So what have we actually gained by moving from the simple regression model to the multiple regression model? Because in a way the, the, the interpretation of the coefficient really doesn't change. But remember in the simple model if our assumption of absence of correlation between family income and expenditure didn't hold, then we would not get unbiased estimators in our simple regression model. For the multiple regression model, we do not have to make this assumption of expenditure and average income being uncorrelated anymore. In fact, they can be correlated and still we can get unbiased estimates for the beta 1. That is a quite significant improvement because that assumption of these two variables being uncorrelated was quite unrealistic in this particular case.